What's talking? It's Street Talk. My name is Trisha. My name is Dejong, and we will be your hosts for today's episode where we talk about total defense. Total Defence was established as a means to bring Singaporeans together as one in the face of a dire threat against an attack. Today we face one of our greatest threats as a nation, not from a country, but from a micro. Not from an enemy that we can see, but from an enemy that we cannot see. An enemy that has crept up on us, where our military preparedness is ineffective. In the next three weeks, we'll find out how Singaporeans are rising to the challenge through the lens of total defence, where every sector of society is mobilised and has a part to play to ensure Singapore's security. In particular, we take a look at the three pillars of total defence that are of crucial importance at this time of the COVID-19 pandemic. Civil defence, where ordinary people step up to help our public services to provide safety and basic needs for the whole community. Economic defence, where not just the government, business and industry support the economy, but we as individuals. And finally, social defence, where we learn to live and work together in harmony and focus on our nation and community rather than ourselves. Let's, Let's hit, hit the, the streets! Street. So what is social defence to you? Uh, I think it's different people from different races uh, in different society and organisation coming together as one. I'd imagine that in Singapore, social defence is something like um, people of different races, backgrounds, religions coming together and um, living in a very harmonious manner. Yeah. For me, social defense would be like uh, the entire society coming together to um, for the cause and to fight against it uh, together. So, what are some Singaporeans' behavior that impressed you during this um, situation? I think most of the behavior would be I think our trust in the government measures and government like en encouragement, yeah, for all their actions and everything. Uh, there are quite a lot of like, heartwarming um, gestures uh, done by uh, fellow Singaporeans. So, uh, for one that I'm very impressed is, uh, you know, uh, the neighbours, they, they place the hand sanitizers in the lifts to, in order for uh, you know, people in the lift to use it. So, I, I think that is very heartwarming. I think one of the most prominent thing is that yesterday at 8pm, I didn't expect people to come out to their balconies and windows to actually clap and cheer for you know, our healthcare workers. It was very heartwarming uh, and I actually saw a video, someone came to the balcony and uh, played home on his, uh, using his violin, which is, I had goosebumps, uh, so that was really nice to know and hear. Yeah. Yeah. I think to add on to that, I think I saw a lot of uh, positive things that Singaporean has done for our food delivery drivers. Uh, one of it being um, some of them actually deliver like food to them and actually say, oh, it's okay, you can have it. And I think for that, like the moment that we show like um, care and compassion to our food delivery drivers, which are like working in this very hard condition right now, I think it's really heartwarming to see and hear as well. So what are some Singaporeans' behaviour which you think can be improved on? Like their behaviour wasn't so impressive. Um, I think the hoarding and the panic buying um, is something that we should improve on. We should put more trust in our government and the people that we have enough resources to tide through the crisis. Okay, I, I think um, the panicking at the start was um, okay. It's uncalled for, but it's understandable because everyone's scared, right? And it's, um, you don't really know what to do, and you're worried that um, like food runs out or like. Um, Things um, um, are on short, like in shortage, but um, I think trusting in the government, trusting in like um, the various agencies that they are in complete control of the situation, they're completely prepared for what's coming, um, coming like coming ahead. I think that's probably um, the best we can do, and um, that will probably put everyone in a better position as well. Okay, to start with, I think when it just happened, uh, Singapore controlled it really well. Like uh, the cases went down in the start, but like after a while, I think. They got a little casual about it and yeah, so now it's again increasing. So I think um, it could have been more constant if um, it had been taken more seriously. On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the worst and 10 being the best, how will you rate Singapore's performance during this COVID-19 pandemic? Oh, um, I mean, it's, it sounds like it's um, politically correct, but I think it's a 10, you know. I, I don't know, I feel like they're doing a great job. Okay, we should be socially um, social distancing right now, actually. But um, yeah, I think it's wonderful that I think that we had a first case like quite a while ago, but we are still having everything under control. Um, 
it looks like the social distancing measures, um, we should be practicing now, but um, are qu kind of working. Um, and I think, um, you know, the whole thing about rationing of masks, um, like PM Lee's um, address to the nation about like not panicking and then the government um, government's updates on like I think WhatsApp or something like they're always very transparent and about how the cases are linked um, I think it really helps in letting the public understand what's going on uh, which probably is the most important part right now um, I think I will rate it about an 8 I think we are doing very well in handling the economic aspects of things as well as the social worries uh, of the people as well yeah I think I would give it a 9 or 10. I feel like we've done a relatively good job, especially in like the contact tracing areas. We really identify cases really fast and efficient. Yeah. Okay, I think I would rate it around uh, 7.5 uh, because I think they've taken uh, good measures to control it without um, going into a complete lockdown so that us, everybody can lead a normal life at the same time and you know, taking care of it. Yeah. So what do you think can be improved? Um, I think uh, um, they could be a little stricter about the rules, like uh, even like the restaurants and a lot of public places are still open, which uh, could, you know, increase the COVID situation. So I think more stringent rules can be taken. Yeah. Is social defense important during this time of the COVID-19 pandemic? Yeah, I, I think it's definitely important. It's uh, more so than anything else now, right? Um, especially given a situation like that, if Singaporeans can band together to um, really um, fight this virus, I think there's, like, um, it would really prepare us not only for the, the future, but um, many other like, challenges that may, um, may arise, like, like you know, non-virus, like, virus, like, but other kinds of um, issues that may have um, come about. I don't know, yeah. So do you think social defence is important during this, to Singapore during this situation? Uh, I think definitely is very important if we don't stay together and we actually um, separate and um, disperse, then we cannot tie through the crisis together as a country. La. I think um, every resident of Singapore has a part to play for social defence. Government can uh, you know, apply policies uh, to a point, but after that it's the responsibility of people staying in Singapore to act accordingly and to control the situation. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in to this special episode of Street Talk. With the current COVID-19 situation, it is a reminder of how total defence is important in Singapore and we really wanted to spend some time to talk about the different pillars that are relevant to the current situation. Please like and share this video with your family and friends to remind them about the importance of total defence. Do remember to subscribe to our channel and watch our other videos. This is Street Talk. Stop, Stop talking, talking already. already. Bye. Bye.